Hello, my name is Rick Carson. For today's Tone Tuesday, I want to talk a little bit about myself and something that we've been up to here. A lot of people may know me because of the plugins we happen to make or some of the records that I've worked on, but some people who know me a little bit better and more personally in the industry or who may have worked with me on some of those projects know me for the fact that I love sounds. And not only do I love the sounds that occur naturally in our day-to-day -day life, but I love things that make sound, and I love the sounds that I've heard on my favorite records. A lot like other people who have done this job. You know, I'm not claiming to be original there, but boy, do I really love them. And that has always led me on this journey on trying to find how to recreate those sounds as well as possible, not only for my own work, but really just for my own curiosity. One of the ways that I have become known for doing that is staring at photos on the internet. If there are photos from sessions or of gear and I can tell how it was utilized, even if I don't have all of the pieces of the puzzle, I will go try those pieces of gear or like pieces of equipment in the same spot just to hear how it sounds and how it affects what I'm doing and how it can help me get closer to capturing the sounds that are in my head of my favorite records. One of those sounds has always eluded me and it is very much in the air right now with the rejoining of Tom DeLonge into Blink-182. I'm talking about Jerry Finn's guitar tone. You know, Enema of the State was a classic seminal record for me and everyone who worked on that record, I have always had just the most tremendous utmost respect for Jerry Finn, Sean O'Dwyer, the, you know, wonderful Tom Lord Algae. These people are just masters of their craft. And, you know, with Jerry's untimely passing, a lot of that information and how things that done back then have really been lost to the sands of time. And it was only roughly a couple decades ago now when they were making those records. It wasn't 50, 60 years ago, but you see these videos from other people online and I feel like part of the puzzle is out there, but none of it has ever gotten as close as I would like to get. And what they utilized to make those recordings is outside of the reach of most people. And we happen to be blessed here at Make Believe that we've been collecting gear for so long that to be honest, at this point, we have the majority of the gear that Tom utilized with, you know, Blink in the early days. While we had this big reamp project, we had cabinets mic'd up and we had multiple lines going and, you know, we had a little bit of spare time as we waited for mix notes from across the world and we said, let's see how close we can get. And there was something that came along, which was a photo of a studio where they made the record. It re-inspired, you know, my friend Daniel and I to start going down this path again of just digging out old photos. And if you could picture it, you know, this is me at 11.30 at night, staring at YouTube with Daniel, pausing in between every little guitar swing that Tom would do at Australia's Big Day Out, where you could, you know, see the amp in the background or any little spot on Conan or Howard Stern or, you know, all of these other performances that Blink-182 did in the era of roughly 1998 to 2001, which is when he was, in my opinion, preparing to go make Enema of State, making Enema of State in the tour, you know, subsequently after that, when that sound was utilized. What was Tom's? What was Jerry's? What was actually utilized? Do we actually know, even though there's photos of a couple things, there's all of these rumors and, you know, Tom changed his stuff after a while. Jerry was known for having tons and tons of stuff and what actually was used on the record is a little bit mysterious. And the only thing that I've had besides a few scant photos here and there, which we'll share with you here in this video, you know, was the sound of the recording. And the only thing that I have that's proof leads me to the conviction that I believe I've captured the tone that I've always been looking for is the sound of the recording. And with that, I'm very, very happy. Back then, when Tom was going in to record Enema of the State, you know, Jerry had his own amplifiers, particularly his white 
Marshall that was modified by Bob Bradshaw to be more like the Dookie amplifier, which you can see that cabinet is utilized here in the recording session for Enema of the State. You can also see that Tom's Vintage 30 Mesa Boogie cabinet was utilized. There's also a Silver Jubilee cabinet. I believe that the Vintage 30 cabinet and Jerry's cabinet are making up the majority of the sound. And that's really what I went after as far as trying to capture this sound. You can see here just by the simple fact that there's less mics on the Silver Jubilee cabinet that I think that was an addition for, you know, maybe one particular tone or something that they needed to do. I also think it's odd because that cabinet I believe was Jerry's, but it didn't show up in a ton of sessions. The main thing to focus on for me was a Marshall cabinet with vintage 30s and a Mesa Boogie cabinet with vintage 30s, which we utilized a Mesa oversized rectifier cabinet for, and we used a Marshall 1960 BV cabinet for. The next thing to talk about was the amplifiers. Tom had a rectifier and Tom had a Marshall. A lot of people know about Tom's rectifier that was used in the early days of Blink-22. They also know about his triple rectifier that was used in the early days of Blink-22. This is a silver face amplifier with aliens on it. It was seen in the Josie music video. They also know about Tom's triple rectifier that was made for him right after End of State. This is the maroon snakeskin with black chassis and the three matching cabinets that he went on tour with for years. Most people don't know that Tom owned another dual rectifier. This was actually a full size head with a chrome chassis. You can see it here in a couple of videos when he was still playing as Les Paul. It also went to Australia with him at one point, and it was the amplifier that went into rehearsals for Enema of the State. And then also it can be seen here in the control room, you know, sitting behind Mark for Enema of the State. You see Tom's full-size dual rectifier with chrome chassis, and you also see Tom's JCM 900. Mesa Boogie has always been known as a big part of Tom's tone. I feel like the JCM 900 was severely overshadowed as far as the tone goes, as far as the lore goes. And if you listen to the tone, a lot of it is actually the Marshall, but it's very interesting on what's actually occurring here. So if you go and you watch the clip from Howard Stern, you can see particularly how the amps change and what makes up a dirty tone and what makes up a clean tone. And you can actually see when the Mesa Boogie is on the clean channel, the B channel for the Marshall is utilized, which is actually the dirty channel. What I found is that the gain of the dirty channel on the Marshall is on roughly one to two and the volume is turned up and that's blended in with the clean sound to give a nice little bit of Marshall-esque tone to the clean sound that comes from the Mesa Boogie. But the clean sound of the JCM 800, channel A, its actual clean amplifier, the gain is on 10 and that is blended in with the dirty sound of the dual rectifier. And that is really the big key takeaway here is the Marshall blended in with the dual rectifier, but not the dirty sound so much of the Marshall, but a relatively clean overdriven sound of a Marshall. There's a lot less definition and note coming from the dual rectifier than people think it is. You know, a lot of people want to believe that that is a big part of the sound. And when you listen to it, it's mostly the low end of the sound. And we have very clear examples of Tom settings. We have very clear examples of Jerry settings, which we'll get in, you know, with when we get to our take off your pants and jacket video. But, you know, really the dual rectifier sound is not a sound that I think stands on its own. And I want to play that for you right now. You can hear it. It's very woofy, very, very thick, very little note definition. <laughs> clean JCM 900 definition was really a huge part of this sound. And utilizing the clean channel in the way that they did, I think is incredibly smart and it took me years to figure out. He is quoted in a Guitar Center article 
um, from the early 2000s, literally saying, I use my clean channel with the gain all the way up, and then I use my dirty channel with the gain all the way up. The guitar fed into a Mesa Boogie high gain amp switcher. That switcher fed into the amplifiers, and then there was a one button foot switch that was actually wired to a Y cable that seems to have gone into the foot switch input of the JCM 900 on the front, and the external switch input of the dual rectifier on the back. One push of that button would push both of the amps to change their channel. Um, you can see this clear as day on the Australia Big Day Out. You can see a dual rectifier button sitting there right with one cable going to it. There's not three cables that would need to be utilized, four cables that would need to be utilized in an ABY sort of situation. Just the one cable running to the foot switch. You know, another thing that's interesting about the foot switches utilized with these amplifiers is that the dual rectifier uses a one channel foot switch where the, you know, JCM 900 uses a two channel foot switch, which means that on the dual rectifier foot switch, it's a one conductor cable, a regular TS cable, where you typically use a TRS cable on the Marshall. Well, what happens if you use a one conductor foot switch on the Marshall? Well, what happens is that reverb is automatically always turned all the way off and shunted down to the ground on that switch. So reverb is no longer an option on the JCM 900, which is fine because you'll see that, you know, the reverb settings were turned all the way off. So there's these things that kind of led me towards what I believed was the right path on accomplishing these, this tone. We've got our dual rectifier, we've got our JCM 900, then we put up our cabinets out in the live room and we blended the sounds between the two amplifiers. For the record, they had 57 on the Mesa Boogie cabinet with a Rode NT2 microphone on that cabinet as well. And on the Marshall cabinet, you had the same complement of microphones. You had a 57, except for you had a Neumann 103 on that. We are utilizing a 57 and a Royer 121 on the Mesa Boogie cabinet, mostly 57. And we are utilizing a 57 and TLM 127 over on the Marshall cabinet, mostly using the TLM 127. I believe that the sound is in the example and if you love the sound that we're about to play you you know please like and subscribe to this video um we will be giving away these profiles if enough people ask us for them and uh, maybe we will have some other things in the future re in regards to this tone and also when this channel gets to a thousand subscriptions we will be giving away a absolutely beautiful boss ce2 pedal and we're you know getting closer and closer every day to giving that out to someone and we're very excited to do that questions as far as this sound goes or how it was captured as far as post-processing goes I will say there's a little bit of top end added with MBEQ and that was kind of you know what we believe Tom would have been doing in the mix it's not much though just nice little bit of top staying away from the mid-range because the mid-range is really baked into the guitars um, but it's very, very close and we'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And we'd love to know if you'd like to be able to utilize this tone at home. And we'd love to know if you guys would like a free boss pedal. Reach out, let us know what you think. And if you like this video, we will continue on next with the, uh, take off your pants and jacket tone, which utilizes a dual rectifier and a Marshall Silver Jubilee. So thank you and please have a great day.